I now want to come back to the radius of convergence of a complex power series. And the next result gives us a formula for calculating this. Right, so this is uh, proposition 3.11, and this is 16.10 in the book. Right, so the radius of convergence which we denote by R of the complex power series given by the sum from 0 to infinity uh, A K Z minus C the power k, yeah. Um, so the radius of convergence of this complex power series is given by the following formula. Right. So it's R is equal to lim inf as k tends to infinity of 1 over the kth root of the modulus of a k, yeah, where a k is the um, coefficient here. Okay, so this is a formula we can use to calculate the radius of convergence of a complex series, complex power series here. Yeah. We will prove this result, so I'll go through the proof. Next. Okay, so proof. Right, the first remark to make is that we know that the power series, so A, K, X, sorry, z minus c to the k, this converges for the modulus of z minus c, which is equal to r, yeah, lowercase r. And this, we know, is less than r uppercase r, okay? Right. We know this, we, we've done this previously, but this implies that the limit as k tends to infinity of the modulus of a k r to the k is equal to zero. I need to, need to think a bit about this. Okay, well if this series converges, yeah, for z minus, modulus of z minus c equal to r, then that must mean that the, the modulus of the terms of this series must tend to zero, yeah? Otherwise, it wouldn't converge, okay? Essentially, that's what this expression means because this r, this lowercase r, is equal to the modulus of z minus c. Yeah, right? Okay, that's the first remark to make. So, so therefore... There exists, and I'll first write this remark and then explain how it works, um, an n0, which is a natural number, such that the modulus of a k r to the k is strictly less than 1 for k greater or equal to this n0, okay? Well, why is this true? Well, if this <coughs> converges to zero, okay, there must become a point where this expression becomes less than one, yeah? At some point along the way, this expression will become less than one, okay? And we're saying that this point is this n0, okay? 
And we know that must be true because it tends to zero. So at some point it must become less than one. Right. Or another way of saying this is the following. We can say that R is less than one over the kth root of the modulus of a k, and again for k greater or equal to n zero. This just comes from rearranging this expression. Okay, if you think about rearranging this, then we can get r being strictly less than one over the k root of the modulus of a k. Yeah, simply rearranging this. So literally, is just a straightforward or statement. Right, we will next take the limb in. <coughs> right, so this implies that R is strictly less than limb inf as k tends to infinity of this expression. Okay, so basically just taking limb inf here which means we get R being less than or equal to, if you think of the definition of limb in. So this is one over the kth root of the square root, sorry, the kth root of the modulus of um, a k. Okay. But, and we used this argument before, R, which is strictly less than um, <coughs> the uppercase R, the the radius of convergence, yeah. This was arbitrary, we just chose an arbitrary R. Hence, we can rewrite this expression um, with our uppercase R, okay? So hence, um, R is less than or equal to lim in k tends to infinity of 1 over the kth root of the modulus of ak. Okay, that's one step of the proof. If we go back to the result, we want to show that r is equal to lim in of this expression. So far we've got r is less than or equal to it. Okay, so this is the first step of the proof. There's two more steps. Basically, when r is equal to infinity, yeah, and when r is finite, but we've got that the lowercase r is greater than the uppercase r. So there's two more cases to do, and then we're done. Okay. Right, so the next step is when r is equal to infinity. This is quite straightforward because then lim inf as k tends to infinity of 1 over the kth root of the modulus of a k will also be infinity which is r, okay? So it works for infinity in a straightforward way. However, I now want to come back to the case if r is finite and the modulus of z minus c, which we know is lowercase r, um, but now this is greater than the uppercase r, okay? So if we compare it to this case, we had um, lowercase r being strictly less than the uppercase r here, so now looking at it being greater than. Right. If this is true, then the sequence modulus a k r to the k so this sequence is unbounded and we know this by a previous result so the result we did last week um, so this is unbounded by corollary 3.9 or 16.9 if you follow in the book. 
Okay, that's one point to make. So therefore, the modulus of a k r to the k must be greater than one, okay? Because it's unbounded, yeah? So this is now the analog statement of this one in the previous step, okay? But now we haven't got bounded. Right. right, so there's only a couple more points to make. Right, this is true, then we can write uh, the following. We can say that R is greater than 1 over the kth root of the modulus of AK for an infinite number of Ks. Okay, this comes from this statement, yeah, and again, it's the analog of this, yeah. Right, well, again, what, if we follow what we did previously, we then took Lim in, okay, so we'll do the same again. So this implies that R is greater or equal to Lim inf of this. one over the kth root modulus of a k, okay? But again, we choose r to be arbitrary, so we can then say that uppercase r is greater or equal to lim inf as k tends to infinity, one over the kth root of the modulus of a k, and again, since R is arbitrary, okay, well, what does this imply? Well, if we look at what we've just done, so here, we're saying that R is less than or equal to lim inf of this, okay? Now we're saying R is greater or equal to lim inf of this. Well, that must mean that it's equal to, okay? If we combine these two statements. So therefore, R must be equal to lim inf as k tends to infinity, 1 over k root of the modulus of ak. And that's the end of the proof. Yeah? This is what we were trying to prove. If you look back to, I've now rubbed it off the board, but if you look back to the result that we stated, this is what we were trying to show. Okay? So essentially, there's three steps to the proof. The first one is where we've got the modulus Z minus C um, being strictly less than uh, uppercase R, yeah? And we did some calculations, and essentially we ended up with this, yeah? Then we looked at the case where R is equal to infinity, and for this we got the result that we wanted, yeah? Then the third case is when the modulus Z minus C is greater than um, uppercase R, and for this, we got this expression, combine the two, we must have equality. Yeah.